The Marco and Altovic saga just carries on going <laughs> without any sign of stopping. Now, there's a lot of rumour, there's a lot of stories. I'm going to try and cut through all the gossip and just deal with the facts. I'm confused, you must be confused. So I've approached the people that are heavily involved in the stories just to find out the truth about what's going on. So you're gonna see lots of conflicting articles in different places, but here's the main protagonists in how this story is reported. You've got Clara and Hugh, which is Hugh and Sean Weston. They, are, uh, they have contacts within the club. So everything that they know is, is really coming from within the club. You've got ex West Ham United employee, again, contacts within the club. I've spoken to both of these today. And then in the other side of the story, you've got Lee Clayton. Lee Clayton is a, is a West Ham fan. Nice guy, Lee. Uh, I've not spoken to Lee today. He now works for Talk Sport. And he is getting his information from the Arnautovic side. And he is being briefed by Arnautovic's brother, Daniel. That's not official, but that's 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 the way it is. That's the only way he's, he's getting these stories and getting this information. So when all the news broke that Arnautovic wanted to leave and that statement came out from his brother, Daniel, and the initial story was released that a Chinese club were interested, that came from Lee Clayton. Uh, that has since been confirmed by the club that there was interest from a Chinese club. It's only really the fine detail on that, that that's being uh, disputed. And to be honest, it's really not that important, but I'm gonna cut through it. So earlier on, I I started reading all these different stories. Sky Sports have got something to say about it. TalkSport obviously do. And all the papers have picked up on it. The Mirror's picked up on it and, and everyone else. So there's just all these stories going around. But I want this to be the, the trusted source of information just because I've checked it. So I phoned Sean up and said, Sean, I'm very, very confused. What is going on? He talked me through it. I also uh, spoke to ex-West Ham United employee and just said, what is your take on it, please, mate? And I think I've got somewhere close to the truth. So anyway, it all starts off for me with this first article which will then allow me to reference other things from it it's on claret and Hewan, and it's the headline is marco's chinese deal is off time to heal now it says a talk sport is today confirming a deal for marco and out to move to china has collapsed and is unlikely to be resurrected it, the radio station who first broke, first broke the story for a new head of radio station operations, Lee Clayton, is now conceding the deal is dead in the water. And Altovich was left out of the squad yesterday with blah, blah. We know that. That's fine. Talksport said this morning, and Altovich now looks set to stay at the London Stadium after the club in China decided to drop their interest, having initially indicated they were prepared to offer around £45 million for his signature. That's £45 million sterling for his signature. That never happened. They didn't offer the 45 million, and that's quite key. I think if West Ham were going to get to keep 45 million, there wouldn't be a problem. We'd probably sell him. But we don't want him to go. This was, he was never for sale. And again, Sean and X will both confirm this and both have done so for me. He was never for sale. They didn't offer 45 million. The very most they offered was 40 million, but. Three million is owed to Stoke on that. And then there's another payment of 1.75 million, which is payable to FIFA, uh, between any transfer between two different federations, a, a percentage is paid of any transfer, which is then divvied up between all of the clubs that had anything to do with that player's training since he became a professional. Didn't know about that. Didn't know FIFA took a chunk of it and then divvied it up. And let's be fair, I mean, considering FIFA's record, um, just in, in terms of transparency and everything else, <laughs> I wouldn't wholeheartedly trust them to do that anyway. But that's another thing. So what it would have left us with, I think, is that the offer, the, the highest there's a couple of sources in the club. Some are saying 35 million euros. Some are saying 40 million euros. Whatever it would have left us, I, as I understand it, with less than 30 million quid. Now, the, the club never upped their offer. And the Chinese club have made it very, very clear that they are not going to up their offer beyond what that is. Now, there's, there's some at the club who think that is that's just not... That's not acceptable. They believe that Marco's value is worth a lot more than that. And and that's it. So it was a no. However, we've since had all of this, uh, all this to and fro in the press with Anatovich's brother really trying to force through the deal. Uh, it's an absolute mess. But particularly with the club, they feel 
I think twice bitten, uh, once bitten, twice shy by the Dimitri Payet situation. We had to accept an amount of money for Payet that we really didn't want to. And if you look at Payet's form in that last season at Upton Park and then uh, how he then went on to play for France, it was a it was completely derisory offer. He At that point, he was one of the best players in the world. I think everybody would agree. And 25 million um, was, was not enough. And out of it... Wants to leave. He wants to leave because he wants more wages. They've offered him big wages. I'm not going to labour the point. As I've said before, I think they're paying 40, 45% tax in this country. So let's say he's on 90 grand a week. He's not taking home 90 grand a week. If he goes and earns 200 grand a week, tax-free in China, he's really times in his salary by four. So you can understand the attraction and the allure. I don't think this is about West Ham. But, but and I think he he loves West Ham, or he, he perhaps loves is a strong word. I think he's fond of West Ham, but perhaps he's more fond of money. But I think the underlying thing here is Anatovic, as things stand at the moment, is going nowhere. He's going nowhere. Now the Chinese club said they're not going to up the offer. If they're not going to up the offer, then that's it. The deal is dead in the water unless another club comes in and matches our value ratio. I think we're saying 50, but I think we'd probably accept 45. That's not X's opinion or Sean's opinion. That's my opinion, that one there. But who's going to come in and offer 45 million for, let's be perfectly frank here, a a player who is, who is approaching, not approaching the end of his career, but he's going to have no sell-on value. He's in his 30s. He, he's prone to a few injuries. And re regardless of whether you believe that Pellegrini um, axed him from the squad or he refused to, to play, it's up to you what you believe on that. But either one, it doesn't look particularly promising, does it? If for a buying club, you're, are you going to be confident if you buy this player for 50 million off West Ham, he's going to be totally committed? Uh, I'm not so sure. And I'm not so sure if I was, name your club, I don't know, say Chelsea. I mean, that looks like they're perhaps tying up the Higuain deal, but if you were Chelsea, would you be confident of spending, you know, 45 million on a 30-year-old? He's going to be completely committed to Chelsea? Highly likely. What he's shown that he could, he's doing to us at the moment, he's likely to do to, anywhere, to anyone. So I'm a little bit worried that this situation that's been created at the moment will... Um, will stop him from coming back into the fold. And I think we probably need him to come up back into the fold. We're not in a position, Gio said in a video earlier on in the week, we're not in a position to allow him just to see out his days in the reserves. That's just not an option. And I think anybody that saw that Bournemouth game yesterday would agree that we need a something better and something more up front, because quite frankly, that wasn't good enough. Uh, just going on here, there's also another another story here. Now, um, just under, in fact, let me just go a little bit further down. Arnautovic refused to travel claim. This is another story in Clara and You. They're not claiming that this is the case, but I'll just read it to you now. It says, Marco Arnautovic's absence from West Ham team yesterday remains an intense topic of conversation, and there may be more to things than initially met the eye. Former Hammers boss Harry Redknapp said on BT Sport that his information was that the player had made it clear he would travel to Bournemouth yesterday. Redknapp said, I'd heard he's refused to travel. Uh, the club, however, continued to insist in morning that the player was excluded by boss Manuel Pellegrini after assessing his attitude during the week. So they're saying he didn't refuse to play. It was Pellegrini's decision. I, I mean, I would, I'd love to hear where Harry got his information from. <laughs> Oh, well, my information is that Anatovy just refused to travel. He, he's from a chop-chop source, you know. I, I think Sandra read it in the Sun newspaper. So that brings us to the next part of the story. So it says here, Marco Anatovic update. Reports that West Ham have accepted a £45 million bid for Marco Anatovic have been dismissed by senior club insiders who have revealed that the only bid on the table was the one originally received. I'm not going to try and pronounce that Chinese club's name. I'm definitely not going to try and pronounce that Chinese club's name. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd have a go at it, but I won't. This one is saying 40 million euros. Uh, it says, 
Issues have arisen as West Ham have a problem with a number of things, including agents' fees. Whilst the move is also complicated by the fact that Stoke City are owed a percentage of the deal, which I discussed earlier on in this video. The deal has now hit the rocks. As it stands, it's not going ahead. I wonder how important that as it stands bit is. But Anatovic himself is far from pleased that the move has hit an impasse with personal terms of over 220 grand a week, all but agreed. So, Anatovic is unhappy that much, we know. Which is not a very good situation at all. Right. Okay. So now we move on. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy situation. So we now find ourselves in a situation where we don't have a striker. There is no money for any other striker. So we've got to look at what is at the club at present. Yesterday, Andy Carroll started up front. And... I've got to say, forget the, forget the miss, forget the, the miss. It's, it's easy to focus on that miss. He missed, he missed an absolute sitter. The bigger picture is how 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 well does he integrate into Manuel Pellegrini's style of football? Now, I saw a lot of people yesterday suggesting that we don't play to Andy Carroll's strengths, and I sort of agreed. However. When I got home um, and I started sifting the way through all the little bits of video on my phone, uh, there were some clips on there, and I've, I'm going to include three of them in a second, which sort of told a little lie to that, really. It suggested that we are playing to Andy Carroll's strengths. So if we are playing to his strengths and it's not working out, then perhaps it's just not working out. Also, do we want to play to his strengths? Is it been such? There seemed to be a massive shift from the way we played against Arsenal to how we played against Bournemouth, and I think a bit of that is the inconsistency of a mid-table team, which we absolutely are. But I just wonder if we tailored our football a little bit too much to Andy Carroll, which sort of ruined our pass and move and all that sort of stuff, particularly between Nasri and Anderson and all that stuff that had that had really just just gone so well against Arsenal. We looked. A very, very different team. Have a, have a look at this clip now. Uh, just some of the bits that I took of Andy Carroll yesterday. Now, they weren't the only ones. Those weren't the only clips. Uh, there were two or three others I had trouble focusing. I couldn't quite zoom in. But I counted when I just looked at my bits. I didn't record all the game or anything like it. But I counted if we launched it long to him on what you would consider reasonable Andy Carroll-type deliveries six times. And that was just what I, what I had re recorded, so to speak. Do we want to be doing that? I mean, that's that's the tail wagging the dog, right? That shouldn't that shouldn't be happening. So, how much is Andy Carroll going to feature? I I find it very very hard to believe uh, that he's going to feature much under any Manuel Pellegrini team. It's not working out for him. I mean, he, he scored a, he scored one goal, isn't he, under Pellegrini? Aside from that, it's just not working out. He doesn't really look a threat, if the truth be told. And yesterday. I was, at, I was at the game and I was really shocked by how much bigger than Nathan Aki he was. And he should have been able to dominate and he didn't. And he was given delivery. So, second half, um, Javier Hernandez comes on. Now, here's the news. I've spoken uh, to some people about Javier Hernandez. And the, the only interest in him is from Valencia. Now, they only want to loan him. But, and they don't have any money to make it permanent. We don't want to loan him. We want the money. Now, we're not desperate for the money either. I think had Hernandez had a, a, another game behind, behind him, he probably would have started. But he didn't look brilliant when he came on. He certainly didn't. However, I do think he fits into Pellegrini's style a lot more than Andy Carroll does. I can't think that Andy Carroll starts another game if Hernandez is fit. That's what I'm saying. So unless somebody comes in with the money that the club would deem appropriate and good value for Javier Hernandez, then he's not going to go anywhere. And as I understand it, the club wants 12 million quid. So he's staying, but he's showing a very, very different attitude to Andy Carroll. 
Well, that's that's great. You know, good good for him. Uh, we need it. Which then brings us on to Lucas Perez. Now, what's the story here? Just scrolling down now. Uh, okay, again on Claret and Hugh, it says Perez mystery absence explained. Lucas Perez was absent from the West Ham 18-man squad yesterday, but the striker is not suffering from a new injury. The 30-year-old was dropped by Manuel Pellegrini, unimpressed by the way he trained during the week. Well, that makes two of them. I told you, I told you on a, a video I did this week, and Altovic did not train well during the week. He, he didn't. I had that on very, very good authority, by the way. So there's two of them. So, so clearly Perez is just not, not training well. Now, when he says not training well, does that mean he's not controlling the ball? I don't take it to mean that. Is he hitting a post when he should be hitting the back of the net? I don't ever take this to mean that. I take it to mean a lack of application, a, a poor attitude, maybe. That's my um, translation of it, my understanding of it. Might be wrong, but that's that's how I see things. Maybe, maybe you look at it in the same way. That, that's I, I think it's attitude more than ability, so to speak. Asked about Perez's absence by reporters post-match, Pellegrini answered, same as Marco. Marco, I chose the 18 players that were better during the week. So he's pretty much confirmed what the league had been as well. Real Betis remain keen on signing Lucas Perez from West Ham. Uh, claim Estadio Deportivo. Whoever they are, I guess it's a, a news agency. In Spain, uh, Betis wants a loan with an option to buy, but while West Ham have demanded any loan come with a compulsory transfer deal in the summer, West Ham want four million for the striker they purchased for the same fee, with eight hundred and eighty thousand strange figure as an upfront payment. Spanish publication has reported that Perez is also an option for Barcelona. Really, for Barcelona? Anyway, Ernesto oh, Valverde. <laughs> I'm sick. Why can't everybody be called? So anyway, don't worry about it. He's looking for a backup to Luis Suarez. Um, apparently. I, I, is that true? I don't know. That's a bit of a weird one. Perez has managed two goals in ten Premier League appearances for West Ham this season. We get to the we get to the point finally. We got problems with all our strikers. So what are we gonna do? Now, I spoke to ex West Ham United employee. Where's it gone? I'll just click on it now. And I said to him, mate, you know, what is, what's going on? What's going on? Can you clear this up at all? He said to me, he said, Gomez is the main one, the main target that the club want. But nothing will happen unless Arnie is sold. Sean told me the same thing about money. He said, there's no money. Okay, so Perez could move on and a short-term fix found, possibly Giroud or even Balotelli. That's from ex West Ham employee there, so uh, and he's more than happy for me to um, to report to report that as coming from him. So, oh, is it good enough for us to go in with the strikers that we have left? And I said, I asked, I asked Sean. I said, Are we going to carry on as we are? He said, If nothing happens, yes. So we will carry on with Arnie, with Carroll, with Chicharito, and with Perez. As things stand, I think Arnie's our best striker. Um, he's the one that can do everything. He can pull wide, can't he? He can run in behind. He's, you know, he's got strength. He's, uh, but I think as things stand, when you take everything's consideration consideration about this this transfer saga, I think probably our best option for the remainder of the season is Hernandez. Um, it's it's just going to run and run. But if we are left with Marko Anatovic, and Marko Anatovic stays. And that seems to be what is going to happen, as I said at the start of the video. Unless someone comes in with that money, he's not going to be sold. They are not going to allow Anatovic and his brother to pressurise the club into selling him on the cheap. Talk Sport, which is Lee Clayton reporting, he's unlikely to go anywhere. Well, that's very different to what was being said before. And it's not that I think Lee's making it up. I just think that... They are starting to accept the Anatoviches here. They are starting to accept that they're going to be staying at the club. And that throws up a very, very interesting dynamic. Because if he is going to stay at the club, then he's got to be reintegrated into the team. So how are the players going to respond? And how are us fans going to respond? What do we want? We're unlikely to get relegated with the points we have already. So it's quite interesting. It's clear... They don't see Hernandez as a long term, and Alavich wants out, and Perez isn't there 
for the long term either. Carroll, his contract is running out, so it is not beyond the realms of possibility that the four strikers, senior strikers we have at the club at the moment, are, are not going to be around next season, which can be a complete overhaul, isn't it? So is it, maybe it's a case of muddling through. If we're going to muddle through, do we muddle through with a Nautovic there? How sorry is he going to be if he comes back? Now, Gio, earlier on, did a post on, um, on Hammers Chat. And Gio asked, he said, for you personally, is there a way back for an Altovic at West Ham? I'm going to read you some of the comments. Um, M. Kirby says yes, but he needs to dump uh, that poisonous brother of his. Can't see it. He's not going to dump his brother. His brother, his life. His brother has followed him from club to club, from country to country, working with him, living with him. I don't see he's going to dump his brother. He, he probably His brother is possibly his only ally at the moment. So I can't see that. Um, but lots of people agree with that. Lots of people agree with that. Um, West Ham stats stay safe if he apologises and plays out of his skin till the end of the season. I, I sort of agree with that. A, a, a public apology of sorts and then he shows that he's committed. Uh, Paul Knight said, uh, for me, you would have to fully and publicly repent sackcloth and ashes stuff. Can't see it happening, though. Um, Happy Hammer 72 said no. Uh, Slav, we know Slav. Um, he hopes there's a way back for him, I think he's saying. English Hammer says, unless we get an improvement, I'd keep him the summer and flog him for 40 million. I mean, that, that's something I keep hearing as well. That's that's been trotted out by a lot of people that would, and, and the club, I think that's a club's line as well, where they, they would look to do something in the summer. If he doesn't play between now and the end of the season, they ain't flogging him for 40 million in the summer. He would have to play for the remainder of the season as the Anatovic at his best. The Anatovic of last season. That's how he would have to play for the remainder of the season. Then they might get 40 million for him. If what we've got is a sulky Anatovic who's not travelling on the coaches to games, uh, I think we get to the summer transfer window. Are we getting 20 million for him? I'm not so sure. Because that Chinese club are in a position of strength there. Because if they are the only offer in town... This ain't good, this ain't good. I'm sick of these players stitching West Ham up, actually. I, I am I am sick of it. I, I really am. But, there we go. Uh, Vinny says there's always a way back. David Hughes says no. Uh, Ashley says if he comes out and apologises to the fans, start him on the bench for a couple of games, see how he responds to that. I think that's a fair point. If all goes well, give him another go. Uh, lots of ifs, though, Ashley says. Um, yeah, I, I, I sort of agree with that. I, a big one is how are the players going to respond to him? You know, it's it's going to be it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Anyway, look, I mean, there's, there's loads. Go, go, go and have a look. Go, go and have a look on the Hammers Chat Twitter feed and, and, and give your own comments. Come and have a look on the forum at hammerschat.com. Go, go and have a look at Claret and Hughes' site. There's all the news is breaking there. Go and have a look at what ex West Ham United employees got to say. Um, I'd stick to the West Ham news outlets though. I, I really would. And that's that's the whole point of this video. I'm trying to cut through the rubbish. The big news agencies, or whatever you want to call them, Sky Sports and the newspapers, they don't they don't know as much as we do. You know, we've got the, the best information here. It's just trying to sort through what's accurate and what's not. So just to basically summarise, what there was only ever one bid for an Altovic, and it was rejected. The club, the Chinese club, whose name I can't pronounce, are not coming back with a second bid. They've said, that's it. Whether we believe that that is a bit of brinksmanship by them, whether they're playing the game, I don't know. Okay, but that's as it stands, which means Anatovic is staying. Anatovic is staying. He's, even his brother is reporting the same. Not happy about it, but they know they can't get their way. There's nobody else coming in. The whole thing was done by Anatovic's brother to flush out any other potential bidders. There aren't any, as things stand at the moment. We have to sell before we can buy. If Perez or somebody goes out, there's another loan coming in. Uh, Chicharito won't be loaned. He will only be bought. There remains an interest in Maxi Gomez. I think the buyout is 40 odd million euros. Don't know precisely. We retain an interest in him. But unless we can sell and generate those funds through sales, we don't have the money to buy him. The cupboard is bare until the summer. And that, that's it, really. That was hard work. That was hard work going through all that. Do you know what? Maybe it all changes tomorrow. 
Um, who knows? Maybe a club does come in. But as things stand, I do believe an Outovic better learn to live with us. And whilst we don't have to learn to love him again, I think we better learn to live with him because from what I saw yesterday, uh, Andy Carroll up front on his own for the remaining games of the season is not going to cut it. Uh, I guess that's the other, the other race up the sleeve, isn't it? If someone like Sam Allardyce gets a club, Andy Carroll's been fit for quite a long time now. I dare say Andy Carroll plays a lot better for some other managers than Pellegrini. Not for attitude. He's probably the only one that has got a good attitude, to be fair to him, Andy Carroll. Um, but I just don't think he suits the way the club is anymore. So maybe he goes and a lone player comes in. I don't know. You know, what can you say? Let me know your thoughts. As always, I do always read them underneath. Always click through them. If you want to send in your opinions and your thoughts, just how I've spoken today uh we had um a brummy brummy hammer sent his first ever one in yesterday um then please do please do send your videos in um info at hammerschat at gmail.com actually no info at hammerschat.com that'll do uh or just get in contact with hammers chat on twitter myself on the forum and just get get in touch send us your videos and we will post them up here mind-numbing stuff absolutely Mind numbing. Thanks for thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll keep you posted of any development.